Oh, there was Matt Morozik, and I know I said last night would be the last word in progress on this, but I lied. This is the last word in progress. <laughs> um, so he is one solid piece right now. The arms have been epoxyed on, the legs have been epoxyed on. He's on there. Uh, so once I got the epox, once I got the arms fitted and on there correctly the way they need to go, I put the legs on. I let the epoxy set up to a point where um, I could get them on the base and situated. If I if I epoxy the legs on and just kind of held them where I thought they would go, he wouldn't have fit back in the base. The keys, the holes wouldn't have lined up. So I got it to the point where the epoxy started to kick off, and I set them on the base, and then I just kind of um, moved the torso around until everything lined up. So now it lines up really, really well. Gone through, and I've done all the touch-ups I need to do except for on the neck, um, which needs an airbrush. So I'm going to do that. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to do that tonight. Right now, I'm going to do is I'm going to work on the, the base, get the base knocked out tonight. Pretty simple, just a stone look. So I'll, I'm going to do that on camera because it shouldn't take too long. So I went through and did all the touch-ups on the black, you know, just, just clean things up because even with masking, sometimes it's not the, the neatest. So it takes me, I spent a lot of time going through and just trying to tighten things up as much as possible. And again, this is not a perfect paint job. I don't think there's ever such a thing as a perfect paint job. But I think this is some of my best paint figure paint work so far. After everything I've done, I'm super, super happy with this guy. I think he looks amazing. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out is the, the heads and how they fit. Um, and let's put the hands back on because we'll look, make sure they're on the right side. Put those guys back on. Those fit on beautifully. Now, Anytime you have something that comes on and off, you're going to get stuff that scuffs. Luckily, when it scuffs, it's not a place you see it. So, like, this one's not so bad. Actually, when it doesn't, doesn't at all. But when you pull this hand off, you get a little rub mark right there from the blue paint. And that's no big deal because you're not going to see it. If it bugs you, Chris, all you got to do is take it off, wet your thumb or your finger, and this should wipe pretty much wipe right off. Or not. But don't worry about it. You're not going to see it. Um... What I had to do some adjusting is on the head and the custom heads. I had them fitting so well <laughs> that by the time I got all the paint and the sealer on, they were extremely tight and there's a lot of rubbing going on. So what I ended up having to do, Chris, is on the custom heads, I went in and I actually took all the paint off on the inside of the key. I'm going to touch this up a little bit right here. You're not going to see it, but where I got the head on and I went to take it off, some of the paint actually chipped out right here. I'm going to touch that up a little bit, even though you're not going to see it. I'm not going to paint the inside edges of the key because right now they go on there pretty easily. Before, I was having to really push down on to, to go down, uh, but now they go on pretty smooth. Um, I, you know, I love I love the face sculpt of the heads. Uh, on this one, I really love the face. I just wish this edge would have been sculpted more towards the neckline. Um, and I, just looking at other pictures of this head on the statue, that's how it goes on there. This, and that's part of the appeal of the sculpt, I think. So, like, this is a little exposed on the statue. I think that's the appeal of this face. It's a little skinnier, um, you know, just it's, I know, it looks more a little, maybe a little meaner. So, I guess that's the appeal of the sculpt. Um, and I've seen, you know, I'm always seeing touch ups, other little touch ups I see. So, and they keep going. So, again, I'm not going to put paint on the inside of the key. I'm just going to leave that bare. It's not going to be pretty, but. Um, it'll save you from having to really kind of get these guys to go on. This one fit uh, fit better, actually. Um, so I keyed them a little too good. Um, they fit perfectly before I put paint on. But once I got the paint on, there was some rubbing and stuff. Man, I love this thing. I think it's so cool looking. Um, really, really happy. So what I'm going to do tonight is, um, you know, I keep seeing little things that I could just look at this thing for hours and just keep finding itty little bit of Bitty things that bug me, so I'm actually going to stop because <laughs> I'm just see, keep seeing more. Um, so what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to work on the base. He's epoxy; he should be solid. I can pull him off, and I got to uh, spot the neck in. Depending on what time it is tonight, I may do that, um, but then he'll be done. So take this all apart, and this epoxy should be nice and cured. So I should be able to take him off. It's been sitting for a good 30 minutes, so now he's one solid piece. Take him to the side, out of harm's way. Come on, I'm just organizing all the parts over here. Uh, just give me a second, guys. I want to make sure I stand him up. Just 
it's on the off chance those legs will need a little more time here. I don't really need to that. Okay, so for the base, pretty simple. Um, I just masked it off. This would be done mostly with hand painting. Um, so, since I already got a black base, I can basically start with this. I am going to scuff up this edge a little bit where I had the clear coat. So, I'm going to get one of my new sanding sponges that came in today. Yay, new sanding sponges. It's going to be an ultra fine. I'm just going to cut a little piece off. Just so I don't waste it. Just like that. Just a little square. A little piece of ultra fine sanding sponge. And I got this taped off. So, now I'm just going to go around here on the edge. And I'm just going to sand this. Oops, sorry. sorry about that. Awesome camera work as usual. Hold on. I need to come up with like a really good camera rig system. I just don't have one. Everything's jerry rigged the way I do stuff. Let's see if this works. Okay. So again, I'm going to take this. I'm just going to sand this edge, scuff it up since that's. A uh, really shiny clear coat. If I didn't do this, uh, the paint wouldn't stick. And it wouldn't be no fun. I actually will probably go take this in the spray booth and hit it with a, a shot of black primer. I'll start off with um, black and work my way up. Actually, I don't need to do that. I don't really do. I know what I'm going to do. I'll take a scuff up. I can go. Going on here. Going out here. Come in. I need to go get an air compressor. I don't have one out here that's um, ready to go. I'll be back. Give me one second. Okay, so it came to the spray booth because I couldn't get, I need to do some comp compressor main, I thought. I was going to take this and just a little black style res. I'm going to miss this on real quick. Just real light. I'm going to go right, right into the cup. I'm going to worry about cleaning it out. I'm just going to kind of miss this on a little bit. I want to cover it. Just kind of give it some modeling. We have to pass this down a little bit. Back to the workbench and we'll continue on. Okay, back at the workbench. 
and we're going to do some dry brushing. Get myself a little towel. I have a nice big flat brush. I used before here. And we're going to start dry brushing some colors on here. Let's pick some out. Let's do, um, let's see. White, even though I'm not going to use white, we do a gray probably. Do a black out so I can mix it with a gray. Um, the orange is gray. Add some browns to it a little bit here and there. Uh, maybe a tad of green. Here we go. Play out. So we're going to work dark to light. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here with um, German Gray, Vallejo. This is just a dark gray. There again, we'll put some on the brush. Most of it off. And this, you're not going to see a lot of this at all at first because this is pretty dark. I think I'll go in here between the rocks a little bit. A little juice. I'm going to bring this up pretty bright because I'm going to go in with a wash or two to bring out all the details and the everything so just that little bit right there is already adding some dimension to the stone stuff showing up on camera my camera doesn't, my cell phone camera doesn't do well with bright colors. That yellow just doesn't show the shading I have going on. Hoping it'll pick up in my final photos because it's there. It looks really good. Okay. And now I'm going to take some of this leather tan. Just add some different tonalities to this. I don't usually clean off my brush when I'm doing dry brush. I just keep going. It kind of helps the colors blend together. Leather brown. This is a back and forth process, like many things that I do, it's back and forth, back and forth. But you can see that brown's kind of picking up just a little bit it's subtle. That's what we want. We want, we want subtle tones. Got like four of these IKEA S lamps that used to kind of point light where I need it. It's kind of helpful. All right, going with some of the green. Is um, 
German camo, bright green. Pretty bright color, but it'll come back down. These are just kind of like the undertones. Again, don't mind you see my brush, it's gonna mix it with the brown. Simulate a little bit, of that. maybe some moss on the stones. Smoke right there, okay, right off. Right spot that here and there once in a while. I'm this process is just very organic for me. I just kind of go. You can see I'm not real neat about it. I just, just kind of go with it. Kind of works for me. If you shake your paint up a little bit. Mix up the gray here. White. Black. Can't see my palette, but right here. Mix up the gray. Kind of medium gray, a little bit of that brown right there. You can see I just keep wiping off my paint in the same spot on my towel and just kind of do that. So I just kind of pick up some of all the other colors. I go clean the brush off. It's looking pretty flat right now, but it's going to go and do some shading and stuff. I like the green there. Give it a sense of kind of moss. So hopefully, uh, I still like this. I'll send pictures when I'm done. There. Go back in with some of the brown. Just kind of working between all these colors. Right now, I'm just using the very flat part of the brush. And I'm sure they just get the tops of the stones and stuff.
good thing about with the Vallejo is if you mess up, you literally just wipe it off with your finger or, you know, damp Q-tip or something. Right. And then I'll probably go seal this. And just using the very top of the brush, the flat part of the brush. See, it just gets the very tops of the rocks. Highest points that catch light. You start doing that, you start getting some shape and dimension. Get some flat. This is a little, it's a little more methodical, so haphazardly. edge a little bit. Not much to say. I mean, I just, when I do the stuff, the bases, it's just, I mean, I just kind of go quick and dirty in it until I get what I like. I'm actually getting pretty closer. Doing this white on the very top uh, makes a huge difference. I start getting to see all the highlights. Um, a little bit of green there is nice. Gives a sense of maybe some mosses on the rocks. You can see the brown in there just a little bit. It's just an undertone. When you go in that straight white, it doesn't it doesn't turn out straight white because you see all the colors underneath it, but is there anything that bright highlight? Yeah. Especially on these hard edges right here where the claws went through the rocks. I'm not going to do so much of the bright white right here because he's standing right there, so it wouldn't be so bright. Casting a little bit of a shadow there. smaller brush here in a second. I think instead of doing a wash, I'm just going to go in there and just kind of do some uh, shadowing, kind of with dry brushing again, just with some black in between the rocks. So let me rinse this brush out with the dries. Get rid of that. Get some uh, black here. 
Actually, I'm going to mix up this German, maybe this German gray again. A little bit of black, so it's a darker gray. Now I'm going to get a smaller flat brush. I get these brushes at Hobby Lobby. I almost bought some more today, but I bought some money last time. When they're half off, so you get a box of like 24 brushes for like seven bucks. And so I do use them for everything because when you get them half off, they're super cheap. I mean, I've even, I've even, I've even used them for epoxy brushes. <laughs> Which, if you don't, epoxy brushes are brushes they sell you that are supposed to be really cheap throwaway brushes, but they tend to cost a lot for what they are. I'm going to come in here real light between the rocks. Just kind of darken the grooves a little bit. I don't want to cover up kind of all the colors. I just want to give a little more definition. The stones. You can see that that helped a lot already. Don't take much. And if I get a little bit on the edges of the stones, that's okay. It just kind of gives them some more shape. Softens the transition. Okay, maybe that was just a little bit of straight black. A little light. In the deepest areas. They're really, I, I love this. I love kind of doing these stone bases. It's a lot of fun. It's just so loose. And I'm not used to loose paintings. I'm so, coming back, coming from doing mechs and Gundams, man, it's, just, it's such a, to me, it's such a, I like, enjoy them, but it's such a, like a, it's not a loose process in my opinion. It's very kind of technical um, painting, very technical and, um, I never did a whole lot of weathered mechs either. I did a very few, I think maybe three or four. When you get to stuff like this, it's very loose. Kind of go with the flow, feel to it. I'll probably come back over. This whole thing one more time with just some straight white. Just to get any of the little areas where I may have gotten too much of this black or dark gray on it. Make sure I get paint all the way down in there. Really deep grooves here where the claws went to the rock. Make sure I get paint all the way down there. Probably should have done these first. I've been when you're doing stuff like this, you typically work from your low spot to your high spot. Especially when you work in dark to light, I kind of probably should have done this little step here first, but it's no big deal. It's pretty forgiving. So I like last night I worked, I know I worked about uh about midnight and then I went to bed. I could not fall asleep. I didn't I mean I really did, I didn't fall asleep till almost four o'clock in the morning. I don't know, I just could not sleep. Should have come up here and kept working. I would probably would have gotten them done last night, actually, if I would have done that, but um I don't know, that's kinda when I start to make mistakes though. I 
I force myself to go work. My mind's not in it, so probably a good idea that I didn't, but I probably could have. Just about got it done last night. It's weird because I'll be working on a project. Man, I got so far to go. I'm like only 40% there and I'll get going. And then I'm like, okay, I got like 30% more to go. Then like all of a sudden it's done. Uh, so like when I'm doing touch-up work, and I'm doing like all the touch-ups. I, I could spend just, you know, I, I see all the little itty-bitty mistakes. You know, there's always mistakes. I never have a perfect paint job. Um, and um, I don't think anyone out there could say that they have a perfect paint job. I mean, maybe there are. Maybe there are guys that think they, they do have perfect work every once in a while. I don't ha I never do. There's always little things that I could have done better or little things I could have gone in and fixed better. When I start doing touch-ups, man, that, that could take me just forever because I just go in there and I see every little nitpicky thing. Like, oh, okay, well, I could, I could go in there and fix that. Oh, I could go there and fix that little itty-bitty spot. Stuff that the normal viewer or the client would probably never, ever notice. But, you know, when you're working on a project like this for so long, you just know every little square centimeter of everything. You kind of sometimes have to just like back up. It's like, okay, it's, it's good. It's done. <laughs> So now I got these claw marks looking really good, really pr prominent, or they're just kind of dark and gray and they weren't standing out. I'm going with black and that's really helped them stand out a little bit. Let's go back into these, these crevices and do the same thing about doing a wash like i mentioned earlier but i do like washes but i like the co overall color i have going on here and a wash would just it would shift the color every um, quite a bit so i don't want to mess with that i can do all my shading without an airbrush i can do just with this try, try brushing Turn a low spot and just kind of fan it out. Like that. I like subtle shading. Um, looks more natural to me. Kenny Alessandro is a very distinct style. It's very contrasty, very dramatic. I like it to an extent. And I think he does awesome work. It's just not my style. So I like the look that I go for. I don't see much work from him later. I don't know if he's, he's okay. I don't know. I think Facebook does this thing where if you don't comment on a, someone's page or anything for a, for a certain amount of time, they just stop giving you notifications about that person. It's weird. It's like, I don't know, it's like they're controlling who stuff you see. Close here. Nice definition and stones. Got some nice color variation going on. I'm gonna throw them on the base. Oh, I don't want to throw them on the base until I seal this. The Hellboy base, um, I can get a Hellboy base done, start to finish in about two hours. Um, about how long it takes me. That's how long it took me to do the first one and everyone afterward. I mean, basically do the same processes, just different colors here and there. But um, it's a very free, I don't know, I like it. So let's, let me get some of this dark gray over here going. Running that back into these darker areas. I'm 
I'm a little heavy with the dry brush here in the beginning. I got too much paint down between the rocks. So I'm just going back and kind of fixing that a little bit, which is fine because now I'm, you're going to see all those colors through. Um, it's dark gray that I'm mixing up. Thank you to the five guys who keep commenting on my videos. <laughs> this is a work in progress. <laughs> At least someone's enjoying it. A lot of times it's not very exciting to watch. I know that. I'm not the I'm not the best teacher, that's for sure. Because half the time I'm learning it as I go. So if you're trying to learn something, um, you're learning with me. So you see my work process is kind of I don't have a certain work process. I just kind of go with the flow and do things. They come to my mind and I need to get done. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Got nice definition to the stone. Actually, looking better in camera than it is in person. Nice and nice and punchy in the camera there. It's looking a little flat in person. So when I go and add one more highlight, it'll punch it up. Just, just enough, I think. So take some of this dark right here and just kind of go along the bottom edge. That. I'm going to go with one more highlight, and I think I'm going to seal this in, in the picture off and see what he thinks. I like it. I think it's pretty good. Some nice tones going on in there. I hope I don't have to match this on the next base. I can get close, but it won't be the same, that's for sure. So again, I'm just going to go with straight white, just using the very flat part of my brush. I don't want to get any of this white down between the rocks. That would just waste all the work I just did while going in there and trying to get some definition. I really want to accentuate the claw marks. I'm going to hit those kind of heavy with the white. And it would be a fret, like a fresh crack into the rocks. So it would be a harsh edge, a harsh, a harsh, a harsh highlight. So if you watch this whole process, you can see how we kind of start out really flat looking, start dark. Work our way up to like a middle ground and a bright, and we go back in and do some more blending back into those colors. We're gonna back and forth, back and forth. So you kind of get what you, what you like, and I'm digging this right now. I like the little tones of green and brown we got going on there. A little subtle, but it's like natural stone.
airbrushing is a technique and you can go over i said before you can go overboard with it really quick it's really easy to kind of go over a whole surface and just kind of dry brush everything and then it looks really flat so <clears throat> i learned that the hard way the first few times i kind of applied this technique but i try to go in and selectively pick areas to a highlight or tone down um you know i may pick a certain point like these stretch marks i really want to uh be accentuated so it's why I'm kind of hitting this pretty hard with the with the white and now I'm seeing that I may want to go back in a little bit more German gray black it's looking really nice on camera it's not so punchy in person I, I want it to look like what I see on camera is what I want to see in person. I just did some straight black. Not much. Again. Really easy to go over boil black. It's a very powerful tone. And it's not a color. Black's not a color. Black's the absence of color. White is all colors put together. There you go. Color Theory 101 for you right there. Black is the absence of color, and white is the combination of all colors. <laughs> someone okay i'm gonna seal this up and shoot a picture over to chris and see what he says but i think it looks pretty good so um i'll be back okay so i sent a picture to chris and he wants to go a little lighter so i mixed up some of this german gray and white and we're gonna lighten it up a little bit and i sent him that picture first because i kind of remember him sending me a reference where the 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 uh, stone was lighter, but it's much easier to, um, in this process, to lighten things up than it is to darken it. So I'd rather send him a dark photo, say, hey, lighten it up a little bit and go from there than say, hey, it's too too light. Can you darken it? So, and this won't take very long. It's very easy to do. I'm just, I'm just mixing a little of this German gray, adding a little bit of white to it, and I'm not going crazy with it. I still want to keep some of those green tones and stuff that I see underneath. Um, they're there. I may go back and add a little bit more. And then I'll go back with just straight white again. So I'll be covering up that highlight I had done earlier <clears throat> with this gray. And again, I'm just using the flat part of my brush just to hit the tops of the stones. He said he liked the darker stone. Um, I did that initially at first because I thought he would stand out really well against it, being yellow and uh, bright colors. Um, but yeah, no problem. It's easy to see it just right there, just like in a few short steps. I lightened it up pretty good. And I think if I lighten up this edge, I darkened this edge originally. If I can go back and darken it just a little, or lighten it up just a little bit, I'll help. The bottom is black. We want that to stand out a little bit. I don't want to take the tape off until I'm done. Okay. There's that. I'm going to go back in with some of this green again. It's right here, actually. Super, super light with the green.
And I'll go back over this with the brown again. Like that. Try to avoid getting any paint down the cracks where I got kind of that shading going. I got a little bit over here where I may go back in and <clears throat> go back and re um, do those little spots. Make some burning on the green. So I'll send another picture of this once I get the white on, and we'll go from there. And I don't want to get too bright and say, oh, it's too bright. It's much easier to brighten it up than it is to darken it. So I'd rather be, I'd rather be go back and forth a few times with them. But now I'm going to go back with this white. Again, I haven't cleaned my brush. I'm just going to keep using it. So this has come up probably a good two shades. Just the flat part, flat part of the brush. So this is the last work in progress. I'm not going to, well, I don't know. I probably will, just so people see how I do it, um, I probably probably will videotape the uh, spotting in of the neck. So that's a little tricky thing. Um, I've saved it for the very, very last because I'm not looking forward to doing it because I've got to match the yellow. Um, if, I, if that wouldn't happen, um, he would be completely done. He's all done. I did all my touch-ups and everything, so. This does look a little bit better. <clears throat> Burning this up a little bit. I don't know what, I, I can't remember what Chris said he paid for this kit. I know it wasn't cheap. I want to say it was, this may be a $1,500 kit. <laughs> I don't know. If I could find one, I would probably snag it. So I would love to paint another one. Um, it's been a lot of fun. It's been a fun subject matter. I've never done a Wolverine. And um, it's kind of in my wheelhouse. Like the colors that I that it that are on him are my wheelhouse, the yellows and the blues. It's very did a lot of stuff that a lot of those colors with Gundams. So <laughs> you know it's like <clears throat> I knew exactly how to get the colors I needed and the colors he wanted. Uh, he sent me the references and I knew I knew exactly how to get the color. So that makes a huge difference as far as, you know, was this a quick build now? I'll probably have, you know, I don't know. I should I really should keep a timer like on my on my desk and really figure it out. This is you know, this is an 80 hour project easily. The custom heads took me a long time to fit. Um I spent probably two, three nights on this had skin tones alone, maybe more. So again, I'm just those I struggle with those. Those are hard for me. Which is no problem. I'm I'm fine with that. I'll learn, you know, I'll get better and I'm learning. I tend to go a little dark on my skin tones. I don't I like it. Um I I look at a lot of painting guys that paint figures and I think they're too pink and too bright. I don't know. That's just my opinion. I could be completely off, but I think a lot of them are too pink, too bright. And I don't like I don't like skin that's been like gloss coated. I think it looks really really weird. If you look at your skin; it's not glossy. It's a semi gloss. Now, if you're sweating, it wouldn't be shiny. It might have beads of you know beads of water on it, but it all wouldn't be shiny. I think that looks really off to me. 
But what do I know? I don't know any of this stuff. A lot of guys like that look, but I think it looks really, really unnatural, personally. That's just my humble opinion. I hit this edge all the way around. That'll help get some separation. I think we're there. I think this looks really good now. I thought it looked good before. I actually like it better now. Good call, Chris. Sometimes the clients know what they're talking about. Not always, though. <laughs> so go back in here, right here, where I kind of a little crazy with the white. Bring that in a little bit. I think, I think we're there. I'm just gonna seal this again. Send another picture. I sent him a picture of the base by itself and the picture of Wolverine standing on it because that way you get a really sense of what it really looks like. The base by itself doesn't tell you much until you get the subject on the base. So I'm going to go seal this and send another picture and let's see. Okay, so just sent a picture to Chris. He approved it. And so let's take the tape off and see what we got because I'll get the full effect with the gloss against the black with the stone and everything. Now it's going to be dusty, but that's okay. But it's going to look really, really nice against this um, gloss bottom that we did. I love the final reveal. And he's still not done. I still got to touch up the, the um, neck. And then he's completely done. It's late now. It's like almost it's past 1230 here. And I'm actually tired tonight. Actually, <laughs> Like I said last time, I could not fall asleep. We, only getting three hours of sleep last night. And just taking a very short nap today. I'm actually tired now. Just finish up. Had that, like, I had like a day procedure done on my back. I'm like, that may have screwed me up. For some reason, I don't know why. We'll see how this bad boy looks. Well, having a hard time driving the tape with my gloves on, so. Yeah, that looks so sick. I mean, come on, man. if you don't like that, you don't like fried chicken on Sunday. <laughs> that looks phenomenal. God damn, that looks good. And by the way, the kit was twenty six hundred dollars, so I will not be looking for one of these. <laughs> um, I was thinking maybe like ah, if it's you know fifteen or twelve, I could swing that. Um, Apparently the paint, the factory painted pieces go for like three grand. Which, okay, like holy shit! So it's a this is a popular piece. So it's dusty, but there you go. You get the whole effect. Yeah, it looks good. So the only thing left now is to spot in the neck, and I'll do that tomorrow since it's like really late and I'm tired. So stay tuned for that, and then he's completely done. So uh, we'll see you guys in a little bit. Okay, so the very last thing to do on Wolverine before he's completely done is to spot in the neck. So I think what happened is, um, you can see there where the paint peeled off. I think what happened is maybe when uh, I went to clean this, I didn't get all the surface dirt off. And when I went to go to see what it was, the paint chipped off a little bit. So uh, he just spotted it in. And in order to do that, I had to go through all the steps I did to get the yellow. So I got them wrapped up pretty good here in cellophane. I just don't want to 
risk getting paint anywhere that I don't need it. So I'm going to go here with super, super low air pressure, get real tight, and just kind of go back to the steps I did. And hopefully I won't get any um, overspray anywhere. Um, my main concern is hitting the black and gloss part. So i got some of my primer in here. i got my air pressure set really low. And we're going to go in here, we're just going to kind of just hit the... This little spot right here. I may need to sand this a little bit, so I'm going to come back. Okay, so I went in and I sanded this as best as I could um, to kind of feather edge it a little bit. Let me get a Q-tip real quick. The idea is to keep the repair area as small as possible. That was my goal. Okay, so I'm going to go in here with the airbrush, really low air pressure. Under, uh, white surface or 500 or 1000, sorry. So we got the, so got the primer on. Make sure I didn't get anything on the black. I did a little bit. I'll have to go try to get that off. So I'll be back. Okay, so I went ahead and just kind of masked off that little black area. So I got the, the primer on there. Uh, now we're going to start off where we started off before the number 58 orange yellow base coat. And again, I got my air pressure real low. And I'm just going to try to hit the areas that need the paint. Uh, anywhere I got primer, I'll have to hit, hit it with paint. So, kind of like this whole neck area. When I do this, I take the paint out a little bit past the primer so I can blend it into the other surrounding areas. And already it's looking, it's looking like it's going to work pretty good. Just put this on real light, work it up.
It's going on really, really light. So I'm just going up super, super slow. Pretty good. It's well. This paint's really, really thin. I think I mixed it too thin initially when I first did the, the paint application. That's okay. Better to have it thin than too thick. Alright, so we're going to let that dry a little bit, and we're going to go with our second color and do the first highlight like we did initially before we painted. That dry for a little bit. Let it dry as I'll clean out my airbrush and put the next color in, which is going to be the uh, 329 yellow. That's the airbrush. Mixer for my stirrer. Spray booth needs a cleaning, big time. I'll have to do that after this, after this whole ring for sure. It's a Krylon uh, matte spray. It gets dry spray everywhere. I'm actually going to upgrade my booth in the next few months. I'm actually going to put another fan down below it. So I have a, a downdraft effect also, along with the that because um, I just need more suction in here for the amount of top coat I do. Work with the before we're going to go over and do our personal highlight.
All right, it's looking pretty good. If you guys can see what I'm doing, the angle I just shoot that, but this is how you kind of spot stuff in like this. You just gotta go in. The trick is getting the color to fall blend, especially when you're working in thin layers like this. Pretty good. Now I'll go in the last color and then uh, let that dry and then hit the spot in with some flat coat and it'll be done. And I'll have to go check, make sure I don't need little touch ups anywhere uh, after I take the tape off. Last color is the uh, EX uh, number four, character yellow. I just need the tiniest amount of this. Mixing in my in my airbrush, I don't do that too often because I don't like to do that, especially when spraying like lacquers. Um, I find it very difficult to get the paint the consistency I want, um, so I typically don't do that. Really measure it out. It's easier to tell the consistency if it's in a mixing cup. Back in here. Here we our last bright color. Pretty much it right there. It looks like the color is blended pretty well. Again, this roll low pressure is kind of banding it in a little bit. I miss this over this just a little bit. I miss this over this whole little root area, just a hair, just to help blend it in. Uh, it's a little harsh right now. And there we go. So now, I'll clean my airbrush one more time. And then for the flat coat, I'm just going to use a little bit of, uh, I'm not going to use Mr. The Krylon. I'm going to put a little, uh, uh, either I got some ammo by make, uh, flat top coat that's actually really perfect for this application. Um, I use it all the time when I need to spot in a little spot of flat coat. It's water soluble, it blends real well, and it just sprays straight out of the bottle.
too, because I don't want to show any lacquer thinner or airbrush. If I, if I do I'll put that in here, it's going to turn it into a goopy mess. I don't want. I just want to get some of that. Oh, actually, has not. So this is the ammo by Big, or Big by, and this is the matte varnish. I have some in here for this specific purpose. Put a few drops in my brush. And this will turn up the air pressure just a little bit. I'm just going to come in here super, super light. We're just going to knock that down where we just spray the paint. Not blend in the finish. That's it. Spot repair done. Looks pretty good. So um, now Wolverine is done. So I'll do one more video, but it'll be um, kind of like uh, this will be the end of the work in progress. So work in progress videos are now done. Last video will be a last video will be a final like thoughts video and photo. So uh, there we go. Uh, he looks good, and uh, so far Chris really likes it. So thanks for everyone who watched all the videos and commented. Next one will be a final thoughts and pictures. So uh, stay tuned for that. See you guys next time.